I get asked a lot, how do you tame a leopard gecko? How do you make it calm? Why do your leopard geckos sit on you whilst mine run everywhere? Well, I decided to think back to when I first got my leopard gecko and try to remember what I did and break down what I must subconsciously do when taming a new leopard gecko as they seem to get easier and easier to tame the more I get. And I believe this is down to my personal experience with these animals. Along with my experience, I will also be looking at some science behind taming an animal, and that is where I will start. There's a process called habituation, which, although simple, is thought to be the basis of all other forms of learning. This phenomenon is widespread across the animal kingdom and allows an animal to save energy and also save itself. And it could also be used towards taming your gecko. A little experiment I found in this book is to take a garden snail. Um, I actually couldn't find one. I All year round I can find one and today I couldn't. So I'm using this lovely, very simple, animated snail. So basically you take your snail and gently you tap it with an inanimate object. So if I tap it with this pen and the snail will then retreat back into its shell. Now you would have to wait for it to fully come back out again of its shell and repeat this whole process. Eventually the response to the inanimate object will become less and let's say less dramatic. It won't go straight back in, it will just it won't respond as much. Now usually this takes five to ten taps and the snail will realise that the object is not helpful nor harmful so it'll just it simply ignore it. Now of course your gecko isn't a snail and you aren't an inanimate object, you're actually a potential threat. So I've actually been doing this experiment on wild common frogs in my pond. I have a pond that's situated just around the corner of my garden and um, honestly this is quite a terrible animation but I didn't know how else I could really show what I um, have been doing. So firstly, when I noticed there were new frogs in the pond, I'd slowly look around the corner and when they saw me, they'd straight away dunk under the water. Now I'd usually do this like twice a day and each time, slowly getting closer to the pond and each time the frog's sponsors would actually get slower. Eventually I was able to film this footage that you can see now and the frog had learned I wasn't a threat and I was able to actually get my camera lens within a few centimetres of the frog's face and at one point I actually touched the frog on the face and it didn't even react. This is crazy. The interesting thing about all of this is that I could easily figure out when I had new frogs in the pond because when I walked around towards the pond the original frogs still stay put looking out the water whereas the new ones would actually go under the water and the whole process would start again for those ones. Now you actually probably have an advantage when trying to earn the trust of your leopard geckos because they have probably interacted with humans before and if you buy them from a breeder it's good to know how often he or she handles them. The more used to human contact they are the easier they'll be to tame. Another thing you must consider is a fight or flight response and this is whether um, your leopard gecko will turn to attack you or flee the situation. Um, generally leopard geckos aren't very aggressive at all and um, if you want to reduce the likelihood of getting bitten then make sure you don't corner them in any other tank and you provide lots of hides for them to flee to. Now when you look at a leopard gecko you can see that they're probably not the top of the food chain. They're actually a prey animal and thus you can tell that because they've actually evolved to have a tail that will detach in the event of an, an attack. So it's good to keep in mind that your leopard gecko will be very wary because it's just a natural instinct. Now thinking back to things I did when I first got the gecko, now the one thing I remember was that I was worried that the gecko was going to bite me. Now as I said they rarely bite at all and when they do, like if they did, um, it really doesn't hurt, especially babies. Um, if they ever get just the, your finger, as soon as they get your nail, they'll know it's way too hard for them. They wouldn't even be able to bite through it, so they let go straight away. Another thing is I didn't wait too long to start handling them either. I get asked this quite a lot, um, but I usually let them settle in for about 24 hours, and obviously I feed them, I watch them hunt. 
usually with the door open because then they are aware of my presence and it's sort of building that trust that I'm completely harmless. Also remember with Gizmo, because obviously this was my first gecko, um, I'd always go in and try to stroke her on the head like this and you have to do it really gently. Some people, if you say to them you can stroke the gecko, they, they go really hard and then their back goes up and stuff but yeah you can do it really gently. Um, and I used to like put my hand in the tank um, to see if she like crawl on and um, one thing I've noticed a few times whenever people try to do this um, who've never held a gecko before and the gecko goes up to them and touches their hand with their mouth normally they just lick you and everyone always flinches because they're sure that the gecko is going to bite them and it's good to understand their behaviour properly because I know that some fears of animals really come from just not understanding them so um, one thing is a tail wag I've done a video on this any links will be in the description below so check them out after this video uh, the tail wag is obviously a warning sign it's not a good one I wouldn't try to handle them if they're doing it to you also you've got to know how they look when they're ready to hunt I will actually put a video of them one of them catching something so you can see basically they focus with their two eyes onto the thing sometimes they waggle the tail but they're very focused and if they walk up to your hand and they just lick it they're not going to bite it they they you could tell when they're about to hunt and obviously as i said they lick a lot they clean their eyes around their nose if you put your hand near them or well, gizmos oh there you go um yeah they clean it i take clean it they don't really clean it but look at her another thing is people say geckos aren't as like affectionate but look another thing i notice when they're like i think gizmo is only a few months old is when i curve my hand around like this if my hand's nice and warm she would squidge up to my hand and curl around and go to sleep it's so cute she still does it to this day but other things i do when handling um one thing is i talk really softly to them um and quietly and I do this before even picking them up so they're aware of my presence so they know I'm about because um, if suddenly all of a sudden you just open that vivarium door scoop in it's gonna freak them out so they're gonna sort of try to run away another thing I do and it's always difficult to explain this by a comment when people ask me but I do the <coughs> sound um, and they they've always known that sound since they were little so they're used to it and they hear this they look up and then they see me and they'll be calm. Um, thing I always sort of suggest is when you want to handle them handle them in the evening sort of after six or seven o'clock it's nine o'clock now she's really calm it's just the best time because if you get them up when they're trying to sleep which is in the day I mean they'll I don't know it's just I just don't think it's fair because they're nocturnal so it's just better to get them out at night Another good thing is to get them sort of in a routine so especially when they're younger you feed them every day and um, so when you're feeding them they know the food's coming like for example when I get the cricket box out and I shake the bag and they all know they're about to get food they get very excited and then you're seen as a very positive thing because you're the person who brings them the food. And another thing when you're starting to hold them, uh, best thing to do, I would show you now but Gizmo as you can see she's just really calm on me put your hand in their vivarium and pick them up but pick them up over their hides and stuff still in their vivarium so if they want to escape they can just go and hide in their hides and they, obviously it's good to learn for yourself how to hold them so if it's over the vivarium you haven't really got chance of dropping them so if just have your hand in the vivarium um, them in it and if they want to go they can walk off but it's just it's gradually but eventually they will get used to you and they'll want to come out and they'll sit on you and as you can see I mean she's eight years old but she's been like this for years and um, it's just a, a little bit every day and it will work really well um, some people I do get um, comments saying that their geckos are a bit hyper they run a lot when they get them out don't worry because this is actually pretty normal um, they start to calm down as they get to like sort of an adult stage if you think of a puppy or a kitten when you first get them they're crazy and <laughs> and then once they get to adults they're more calmed down and yeah this is ridiculous look at gizmo she's just doesn't even move so calm and always the best thing to do 
is be calm yourself, be confident and move your hands slowly. I actually gave my gecko uh, one to my mum to hold and she kept changing her hands one in front of the other one really quickly and they were going, I think it was Ziggy or Minnie was on her and she was running and running. I was like right give her here, sat on my hand completely calm so there's a lot to do with you as well just being able to be confident calm holding them and um, they respond back like this if you want any more tips on handling I did a whole video on that so click on gizmo right now and you can go to that video um, if you're on a mobile device go in the description box below and there will be a link there too I hope you have found this helpful and um, I really hope you guys get tame geckos. Thank you for watching.